It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having uh, an unbelievable week to this point. Hope that the things you set out to accomplish, uh, you accomplished. Uh, re regardless to whether you had a great week or not, regardless to whether you felt you have had progress or you have experienced setbacks, remember what I always say. If you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. If you're still in the fight, you still have a chance. And that's all you need to change your life, to change your situation, to move to a better position in any area of life. So whatever you're doing, don't give up, don't quit, don't turn around. No surrender, no retreat. Look, uh, you know the routine. Uh, if you believe in the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project, show your love, show your support, support the work. The work requires resources. We've been doing this now <clears throat> for 30 years. Uh, I've put in personally over 80 hours, 80,000 hours of research. That means that as much as I've worked on anything else, I've worked on uh, finding answers and solutions uh, to the enigmatic issues that my people face and to present it, to create solutions and uh, implement them and more and I will continue to do so. But if you followed me uh, for the 15 years that I've been on social media, if you followed me before uh, I took to social media, you know the work I do. Um, 27 books, uh, thousands of scholarly articles and position papers, uh, 30,000 plus uh, prose articles, those articles not considered scholarly, uh, academic articles, uh, but still informational. I have been going, uh, I've been on boots on the ground working with kids. We need your support. If you like what you see and hear on this channel, click the like button, click the share button and subscribe. We need the message to get out. And I think that what I share here today is going to sort of illuminate the challenges we face. By now, if you uh, if you haven't heard, I'm going to bring you up to speed. But uh, Charlton, Charleston White, a very uh, uh, polarizing personality uh, within the black landscape who has uh, a lot of controversial opinions and does a lot of things that gets people in an uproar. Uh, but when you really settle down and listen to a lot of the things he's saying, he's pulling and pointing to truth he does it in a way that again is polarizing controversial and he explains in this interview that he has with cam newton former nfl mb mvp quarterback super bowl quarterback uh cam newton he has an interview and cam talks to him about his delivery um and he sort of highlights some things that i've been sharing with you guys for years and Cam talks to him about his delivery and he says, the problem is everybody's worried about my delivery, but nobody's worried about the delivery of the rap lyrics that are uh, maligning and belittling women, the rap lyrics or that are uh, supporting drugs, the rap lyrics that are talking about uh, uh, lesbianism and turning our women into lesbians and promoting homosexuality and all the things that we know are a problem within our community. He talks about the fact that um, he talks about the fact that we have a rising uh, problem with committee. I think Houston, the area that I live in, is leading. Uh, in that area, but sexually transmitted diseases are on the rise again. Uh, chlamydia, HIV on the rise again. The crazy thing is 80, 85% of the cases of chlamydia, the new cases of chlamydia are teenagers. Uh, a significant part of the HIV are teenagers. Uh, and it's a problem because we are focusing on the wrong thing. The thing is, what, the thing that he pointed out the most is the thing that I've been talking about literally for years. And I'm going to get to that. Then I'm going to get to uh, why we're where we're at and why we need people like Charleston White because of this big ish, this big gulf between the desire to know, the need to know, 
and the ability and the willingness to want to go listen to what's being said. Um, he stood up and said, you know, when he was wearing, when he was a part of media and he was wearing a bow tie and he was working with members of Congress and in the Senate and getting policies and bills changed and in visiting communities and doing all that, nobody wasn't, wasn't checking for him. Nobody wasn't list he couldn't get in the playtime. How many times have I actually seen people show up here who want knowledge, listen to it and go, why do you only have X? Because I'm not going to sit up and be controversial for the just the sake of being controversial. I'm not going to switch up who I am to satiate or appeal to people. I'm going to bring you truth. Those who want truth will get truth, unadulterated truth, and it will be um, as explicit as it possibly can be. But it's not going to push towards your 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 bent towards sensationalism. You're bent towards being entertained. You're bent towards being uh, uh, you know moved in 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 some form of music. So the things that pull us is not the things that we need. And that so what he said is I had to give you what you wanted. Ignorant, stupid dude. That's not the word he used. Ignorant, stupid dude saying ignorant, stupid stuff, and then you bid on it. He says, then I get to tell you about the stuff that I really want to talk about behind the ignorance. Now, what's crazy is, you know, you are in a bad place when someone has to trick you to feed you. Somebody has to lure you to help you. Somebody has to manipulate your emotions to elevate you. That's a problem, and yet it is pervasive within the black community. When things that literally are empowering are referred to as boring because it doesn't stimulate the senses that we're used to having stimulated, and so therefore we don't get the dopamine rush that we need from it, then we say it's not important, but it's the very thing that this entire system has been systematically and intensively uh, attempting to hold back and hide from us. And when we get people who want to bring it to us, we see them in some negative light. It's amazing how much being smart is frowned upon. It's amazing how much being astute and aware of what's going on around you is frowned upon. It's amazing how we've made being quote unquote a conspiracy theory a horrible thing when it's the conspiracy theorists that uncover the conspiracies. See, without real conspiracies, you don't have theorists. See, if there were no real conspiracies taking place, there would be no valid foundation on which theorists could stand. But it's easy to sit up and use the term conspiracy theorists to dismiss the truth when the truth demands that you take action. <laughs> Now, something else that Charleston brought forth in this uh, this interview, and I don't think the interview does long. I think it was close to an hour, if that, uh, with 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 Cam Newton. But he brought forth the fact that we have while we while we are letting our children be bombarded with music. See, it, it, his point was he was answering Cam's uh, statement that it's not so much what he's saying; it's the delivery. And he's making the point in contrast to how people are worried about his delivery, but not worried about the fact that our children um, are struggling academically, that we literally, uh, black children, 35% of black children sit up and read at or above their grade level. The problem is the average adult reads at an A grade level. That if you read and study how people present things in the media, whether it's the Wall Street Journal, whether it's the uh, USA Today, they'll tell you. Uh, one says we write at 11th grade level. One says we write at a eighth at an eighth grade level. 
none right at a college level, even when they are directly aimed at college graduates. It's amazing because they understand based on the research that the average person doesn't read it. Now, why is that important? Why is reading fundamental? Reading is fundamental because it is still the basic, the, the basis of which information is consumed. Can you get it in video? Yes. But to get it in video, someone has to put it in video and give it to you. To get it in reading, I can go find it. I can read it. I can write. When I can read, I can write. I can literally consume and express. I can uh, I, I can literally inculcate, learn, and pull something in, and then I can disseminate it, meaning that I can learn and I can teach. I become powerful because I can not only better myself, I can take how I better myself and use it to better others. It's in this very thing that we learn to problem solve. See, we can't have problem solving if we can't interpret information in a way that we can apply said information to the, uh, to the enigmatic and problematic problematic issues that we face on a regular basis. See, the, the issues that the black community has is a problem solving issue. And we don't understand in our very innate behaviors what we need to do. We are still looking for escapism. What can I do to have fun? What can I do to uh, get away from the reminders that are all around me, that I'm oppressed, that I'm pushed back, that I'm not being allowed to have access to what others have access to? What do I do? I'm, I'm, a, I'm on a party. I'm a dance. I'm going to listen to music. But then I'm not, even paying I'm not even paying attention to the music that I'm listening to. So in listening to the music, the music is reinforcing poor behavior. The music is reinforcing uh, self-hatred. The music is reinforcing misogyny. The re music is reinforcing drug use. The music is reinforcing uh, financial uh, misappropriation and irresponsibility. It is in a constant, 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 constant that we're sitting up and we are dealing with this type of issue. And so I'm watching that and I'm just going, he's right on point. I've been saying this for years. You got to tap dance for somebody before you can tell them the truth. You've got to sit up and pull them in with whatever. And I don't have a problem if that's what he wants to do. My thing is, if we are people that has to be, that have to be lured to the place of empowerment, we've got a problem because the vast majority of the people who have the information are going to lure you. Matter of fact, a lot of the people who have the information are going to attempt to hide it from you. So then what are you going to do? You're going to watch. That's boring. Uh, I don't want to watch that. That's too long. We want everything in a snippet. We want it on a meme. We want it on a, on a short. We, we don't want to invest our time, energy, effort in it unless it's trash. And then we'll bury and immerse ourselves in it. We'll sink our, our, our entire being into it. We'll, 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 we'll wrap it. We'll share it. We'll, we'll sing it. We'll move it around. We'll do it all to the destruction and dismay of our people, but we will do it. And so again, I just had to stop by because I'm listening to somebody say the same thing. Look, I'm giving you what you want. I'm giving you dumb down idiotic behavior and you soak it up like so many other look at the people who get on in social media are they helping people or are they just pulling them away from uh what they're dealing with we love escapism at some point you have to realize escapism is a mindset and a state of being for a moment it doesn't pull you out of the reality you're in that requires real true work real true awareness real true consistency and an and in and, and understanding how things work around you on that note look i'm gonna get ready to get out of here i just had to drop this i had to sit down because i'm looking at it and i'm going like dude He's 100% right. And, and I didn't cover all the things he covered in that little stretch about all the things that are wrong, but I've done it in my videos over and over again. I've literally written it in my books. It is volume after volume after volume after volume after volume of information that uncovers why we're where we're at, what we need to do to get away from it, how we need to do it. Right now, we're in the middle of an 18-month research uh, project dealing with mental health 
and how it's impacting the home, how it impacts incarceration, how it impacts homelessness, how it impacts the development of our children. Uh, it is a part of the uh, ACE uh, equation. ACEs are adverse childhood experiences, and those adverse childhood experiences have long-term uh, negative health outcomes. So our children who are experiencing adverse childhood experiences, traumatic events uh, that are gauged as stressful as children are literally, literally having health outcomes from cancer, autoimmune diseases, uh, lupus, um, type 2 diabetes, promiscuity, a bunch of things. There are 12 times. If a, a child with four ACEs, uh, a score of four, is 12, will, uh, is 12 times more likely to commit suicide than a child with none. 12 times. Four times more likely to um, develop ischemic heart disease, the number one killer in America. So it's not just about how you feel. It's not just about your mental attitude or an emotion. It's literally killing us. And we have the re resources to research it. We have, the re we have the resources among ourselves to develop our own solutions because we're waiting on someone to can fix our problems and that's never going to work when they benefit from us having them. But here's the thing. We're going to have to sit up and do something. We're going to have to sit up and change the way we move, change the way we operate, change the way we think about what's going on. We're going to start trusting one another. We're going to start to unite. We're going to have to start coming together. We're going to have to become a community, a village. We're going to have to become a, peace, a people, a nation. We are going to have to understand nobody's fixing our problems, but we need to understand what they are so that we can change them. I've invested my entire life in understanding and sharing with you some of the things we're dealing with and what we can do to change it. And it has to change. The idea, think about it, the idea that the only way that people can get you to listen to something that helps you is to run bull crap by you first to get your attention, then tell you. The question is, how many people with those answers are willing to do that? And so we need to shift the paradigm. We need to shift the focus. We need to change the narrative. Look on that note, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Again, if you believe in the work we do, look in the description box and give. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Yeah, yeah. They said I should give it up like that just ain't good enough. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be whoever I want to be.